So what is it going to look like when you start allowance with your three-year-old? Take us into your kitchen. Okay. So bearing in mind now, this is our first son. This is our first time through it. I've done a lot of research on it. Talked to a lot of parents about it. And just like every great plan, it will look very different when you actually introduce it to your living child who has a whole mind of their own. With that, Rob, I'll just say to you and to everybody, I always say that the best strategy is one that you are using and that you can stick to. So it's definitely the best plan because it's because you're going to do it. Right? That, that's yeah. really what it comes down to. So the plan, at least for right now, is yes, allowance versus no. And that's the first question parents you're going to have to ask yourself. Do you want to use an allowance or not? And then the second question is, what is this allowance for? And is it earned or given? In our case, we are going to give the allowance. There is no chores. There's no work. There's nothing that is attached to getting this allowance. Other families, on the other hand, will say you have to complete chores to earn your allowance. And if you don't complete the chores, you don't get the allowance. That's one way of doing it. It's just my wife and I have talked about it based on what we've read, what we know, what we've heard, that an allowance at its core is an opportunity for kids to practice using money. So it's not a discipline tool. It's not a reward for doing household chores. It is just an opportunity to practice using money. When you tie it to chores, the big problem that parents will come across is, well, what happens when my kid is not motivated by money and decides I don't want to do the chores? We know what happens is, is you don't get to teach them about money at that particular time. You miss yeah. out on that lesson, right? It's, and it's like, well, the chores still need to be done, friend. So <laughs> we're, we're kind of stuck <laughs> now. And yes, there's the mentality that you don't get paid for doing nothing as an adult, but also the same mentality that you don't really get paid for maintaining your own household either. So my wife and I, again, we agree that we don't want our son to feel like you have to be paid to maintain your own household, that that is something you do as part of your daily habits of taking care of your own space in your own home. So we will be introducing age appropriate chores as we go to get him used to the idea that you just take care of your own home. And that's just part of being a human and part of being a responsible person. The allowance on the other hand is going to come regardless, whether he is being an angel or being the biggest pain in the rear end, <laughs> insert whatever word you want to your parents. I know it's not <laughs> rear end for most of you, whatever sort of pain he's being, allowance is not one of the consequences that comes for negative behavior. Again, because we don't want that to be the situation where money is being tied to behavior. You don't get rewarded for good behavior. You don't get punished for bad behavior. So the allowance is going to be the opportunity to practice. We're going to give him $3 a week because he's three years old. And what he does with that in the beginning is totally up to him. There's no, you have to save half of it or $1 goes to spend, save, give. The beginning is just going to be here's $3. What would you like to do with it? And here are some of your options. You can go out and buy whatever thing it is that you've been asking for recently. You can choose to wait and buy something more expensive later. So at the moment, my son really likes these die cast metal cars that you can find in like pharmacies and low wheels, and a little bit bigger than the hot wheel, but the same kind of idea. Like they're, they're a little kinetic and you pull them back and let them go sort of cars and they're $6. So if we give him $3 very quickly, he's going to realize, oh, that is not enough to go buy a car. So we can say to him, like, if you want to buy one of those, you're going to have to wait two weeks. So he can choose. He can go blow his money on something else that's $3 or less, or he can keep it and try and save up for the thing he actually wants. And your job as the parent is to just kind of be that guide in terms of here are what your options are. No pressure, no direction, just here's what you can do and you let them make decisions. That's the key point. This is the opportunity to make decisions with money. And whatever decision they make, you don't judge them for it, but you do help them break it down afterwards. So right. after we give him this allowance and he goes and buys one of these metal cars, a couple of weeks later, probably I'll be like, you know, what, what do you think of that? Did you, were you happy that you spent that money? Do you think it was a good buy? Do you still play with it? Do you, does it make you happy? And then I just stop. Uh, there's still no like, oh, that was a good buy or you should have done this instead. You want them to come to these conclusions themselves. I mean, you've been buying him these things up until now and probably saying yes sometimes and no sometimes. And he's three, you know, so obviously this will be a great learning opportunity at the age of three, but it's also harder to reason with a three-year-old. So what do you think his reaction will be when all of a sudden he, it's always a no from you and he needs to make the decision on his own. Do you think that he'll be, you know, upset at the beginning about it or, you know, it's, it's tough to reason with a three-year-old. 
Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's really tough to reason with a 13 year old too, Rob. So if anybody tells yes. you it's easier, it doesn't. <laughs> it's just different. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is probably something that we laid good groundwork for as he was younger. When you are exposing your child to how money works. So the, one of the first lessons that a child is going to learn is that to get what you want, you have to exchange money for it. So when you go to the grocery store, you point out that before you can leave with all these groceries, you do have to go see either a cashier or self-checkout and you are making an exchange for what you want. So there is either a card being swiped or cash being handed over, but there is a trade that is happening. And when we go to the grocery store, I bring my son with me every single week. We sit down together beforehand. We make a list together. So he sees my wife and I going through the process of making a list. I ask him, is there anything he wants to add to the list? So he can think about any particular treat that he might want. He can add it to the list. And then when we go, if it's not on the list, we're not getting it. And I swear to you, this has worked so far. Amazing. Wow. We, we go into the store. He will point at something and be like, can I get that? Like, it could be a treat. It could be a toy. It could be whatever it is. And I'm like, nope, do you remember what's on the list? We're here to get this, 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 and this. And he's like, okay, and then puts it back. And I have to say that makes so much sense. I, I mean, <laughs> look, we, we, the children and I have kids, and you know you have to have a pre-conversation to avoid the spaz out later on, but I've never thought to have that particular pre-conversation. Rob, where, where were you 13 I know, years I'm ago? I'm thinking My you goodness. should write a book on how to parent. <laughs> Actually, you could write the handbook because I think you're doing a lot of things very well. <laughs> I would have bought that well, handbook. I think that was, I think that came from Doug Nordman and Carol Pittner's book, which is fantastic. And it is a very long title. I'm totally going to get it wrong. I'm trying to see if it's on my bookshelf. It's too far away to read. Excellent book for just how to raise a financially savvy kid. And this was, I think, something that he laid out that if you create the expectation that we are not going to impulse shop and you lead by example too, like you can't go in with a list. Sure. Be like, no, we're not getting your impulse thing, but we're going to get right. my impulse right. thing. That doesn't work. Same thing. Like if you're saying you're going to walk downtown to go get coffee or whatever it is, or you're just going to browse and you walk past an ice cream store and you're like, you know what? Ice cream sounds great right now. It shows that you can impulse buy versus if you, before you get there, you know, you're going to walk by an ice cream store and you stop and be like, you know what? You've been working really hard or you've been listing really well. It's really hot out. Do you think we should try and find an ice cream store? Like you just preempt the fact that you are going to look for this thing and then you're going to buy it, that there is thought beforehand and it's not an impulse purchase. And if you can do that, when the time comes to hand over the keys to the money to your kid, the same idea applies that he knows that if he wants to buy something, sure, you can use your own money. Let's plan for it. Let's go home and get your money, come back. And that usually is enough for us to be like, okay, he's willing to go home, pull the money out of his money box. So he has some cash that he's gotten for gifts already that we know that he's used to this idea. And he will take the money out of his money box. We'll go back to the store, we'll buy it. And he's perfectly happy when that happens. And if we tell him you don't have enough money in your money box, he's like, okay, I'll add it to my list. And he's got apparently a running list in his head of things that he wants to buy. I feel like if they had shortened that title to how to go grocery shopping with a toddler, it would be a New York Times bestseller. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, oh. maybe we'll do a short ebook about that. <laughs> yeah. No, that's all amazing. And are you going to do this weekly? So you'll sit down every week for, with him? Yeah. I yeah. Guess with um, I guess that's that makes the sense. plan. So we're going to go into, I'm going to go into the bank sometime soon, ask for $150, $1 bills, and that will be a year's worth of $3 allowance and every week, consistently every week. And I know you are very big on consistency as well. You yeah. have that moment, that conversation where you hand over the money and you just take two minutes to break down what the options are. Then when they do want to spend it, just be there to talk with them through it, discuss the idea, ask them probing questions. But again, nothing that is judgmental or steering them towards yeah. or away from, unless it's breaking a household rule. Like if my son decides that he wants exactly. to buy a a gun shaped anything, it's a hard no from us. And we've made that clear from the beginning that there's guns, there's nothing that's not age appropriate. I'm trying to think of what else that he might want to buy right now that we're probably not getting. Chewing gum would be another one because he's just not old enough to have it or popcorn. Right. So like anything that's just, yeah, choke not safe. No choke <laughs> yeah. And so Rob, are you, you mentioned a money box. Does he already have the money box? Is that something that you've introduced or what is that going to look like? And are you going to have, you know, a, a save box available at the beginning or no, you're just waiting completely on, on that container. We have a very nice 
money box. It's one that was given to me by the crowd at Benjamin Talks. It's called a Benji box. And sure, it's, we know it well. it's three containers all side by side stuck together with a, a lid on top and a coin slot on top, but it's totally clear. It's labeled spend, save, give, which I like. My son has no clue what the words are yet, but he likes to sort his coins into the three boxes. So he's got like the silver stuff in one, the bronze stuff in another, and the really big coins in another one. So he has a couple of like 50 cent pieces and like a Sacagawea coin, stuff like that. So like the odd, st odd stuff goes in one as well. So he has that already. I'm actually trying to get him to spend all of this extra coinage stuff so we can get rid of it. And then when we start the allowance that he's starting at zero, so that it's like, okay, you have $3, let's go from there. But if you are looking for a container, it can be as simple as a glass jar. If you're comfortable with glass, plastic, if you're with something that is clear where the kid can see what is inside of it, as opposed to like a ceramic piggy bank where you have to like pull out the plug and see what's inside there. It's great for kids to see their money. It's reassuring to know that it's always still there. They can kind of keep an eye on how it's growing. So there's that visual kind of reinforcement that if they're saving money, they can see it growing and accumulating. Right, growing. You're, so you're not going to begin with anything in the investment realm, because I know you're big on that as well. Is that because he's three or are you going to have a side container for that? Is it just too soon? I hope to introduce it soon. I don't know how long it's going to take, but what our plan is, is to start with just spend. So you get your money, you can spend it whatever you want. Yeah. Eventually, and I'm thinking it'll probably happen pretty fast, he will start asking us for things that cost more than $3. So we start introducing save that you can spend some of it now. Like if there's something you want, that's a dollar by all means, go get it. Let's put two aside towards that car that you really want to buy. So now the spend and save ones are being used. Give Got will it. come okay. next. And I think that again will come pretty quickly. He's already shown a sign of wanting to buy gifts for people. He loves feeding the turtles at our local like nature park. So like there are different ways that he could give to either animals, to people, to, I don't know if he's going to give to a cause just yet, but I'm sure that something will come up soon that he's like, I want to help this person. And Got it. You know, okay. we'll start pulling that from the gift pile. And then invest, I, I think will probably come eventually when we, again, he starts talking about like, how do I, how do I get more I want money? More. Yeah. Right. So eventually he right. will ask for something that is so expensive that it would take him like 10 plus weeks to save for it. And we, he's going to probably say like, well, how do, how do I get more? How do I get this faster? Or I can offer that to him. And that's where the kid entrepreneurship comes in, but also you can invest. And maybe we create a kind of bank and mom and dad scenario where we offer the first investment that he has. So if you put your money in here and you don't touch it for two weeks, we will double whatever's in there, probably something a little less generous than that, but something where you're offering an incentive for them to put money aside for more than just kind of saving to buy something. So one of the interesting things that I found that you said was that you won't mandate that he put any dollar amount specific in any any particular bucket or slot, you know, when, when you get to that, mm -hmm. what we started with our girls from the very beginning was I said, you must put one penny. That was it. It was only the one penny, which I found super interesting that there was always conversation around that the questions that I would ask and make sure there were always a set of them. One of them was, why did you put that in that slot? Why in this slot? Why in that slot? Why in that slot? Just why did you make the decisions you did? There were no wrong answers. I just wanted to hear whatever they were thinking. I just wanted to hear it out loud. And you never know what you're going to learn about them. My, my older, she started from the very beginning, a fourth in each one, all four buckets of fourth for no reason other than that was her natural inclination. So it was just always fascinating to me where they would go with that. And I like that you asked the question because even if all it does is get them to think, huh, why did I do that? Like right. If we, if we all thought a little bit more reflectively about how we used our money, I think it would be a, a huge shift in terms of our mindset around money. Mandating a penny, it's it's hardly anything. Like, I think that could be enough to build a savings habit. I think that's certainly a way to do it. I'm hoping that my son will arrive at that, that muscle, that habit naturally, because as you know, if you try and tell a child to do anything, you're going to be met with a lot of resistance. So that's the idea yeah. is that you're, we're not trying to mandate it because we don't want him to someday come back and be like, well, I don't want to do what you're saying. I want to do what I want to do. And if it's not his decision, what happens when he gets more control and there's more money involved or eventually he does leave and now he's not under our roof and it's like, well, mom and dad don't know. So I ain't saving a cent anymore. Like it's all going my way. So yeah, I want him to, I wanted to want to save is the goal.